So I've invited Diane and Mrs. Packard over for dinner. You'd better hurry and wash up a bit. Well, am I to be the only man again? Can't help it, darling. Mr. Packard's in Washington and all of Diana's suitors are in the trenches. There must be some old gray beard left somewhere we can invite for Diana. Oh, there are a few leftovers floating around, but Diana doesn't like them. If she can't have the best male company, she prefers female. <laughs> Diana's a peach. She should have married one of the boys before they all went over. Poor Aubrey Lawrence, he was madly in love with her. Hurry up, there's soot on your cheek. Well, if I must dine with three women, I'd better look my best. Yes, my dear, cock of the walk. Here's the evening paper. Our troops gained three miles again. My dear, your maid told me to come right in. Oh, Mrs. Packard, I'm so glad you could come on such short notice. I jumped at the invitation. It's so lonesome, Miss Cyrus, way. How lucky you are to have your husband at home. Thanks to his business, the government prefers him here. Uh, take off your things. I'm a little early, but I took advantage of the chance to walk this way in Mrs. Morgan's car. Do you like Mrs. Morgan? Oh, why, yes, don't you? I don't think you ought to like her. Why not? She has a long, bad tongue. Talks about people? Does she? You should hear her, but then you ought not to hear her. About me? Now there, my dear, I've come for a jolly little dinner party, and I'm not going to gossip. Still, if she said anything against me, I ought to protect myself. That's just it. That's what I thought. And she said, oh, no, why should I tell you? Why shouldn't you tell me? Yes, why shouldn't I? After all, I am one of your best friends, and you ought to know. Well, certainly I ought to know. But you may never forgive me. Not forgive you for protecting me? That's true. You must protect yourself. It's my duty to tell you. What is it? You have me quite scared. Well, if she tells me a thing like that, of course she will tell everyone else. By this time, no doubt, it's all over town. How dreadful. What have I done? It isn't what you've done. It's about Diana Chesbro. She's coming tonight. Is she? Your invitation? Why, yes. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well. But in what way can gossip couple my name with Diana? She's one of my best friends. Oh, is she? I am quite sure she is. Maybe she is. Still, they wonder why Diana didn't marry one of the boys before they went off to war. Why should she have? Yes, why should she have, really? Still, anyone as attractive as Diana, she had plenty of chances, didn't she? Oh, yes. That's what they say. All nice men, too, and one or two real pettys. Don't you think it's strange that Diana didn't marry one of them? Yes, I do think it's strange. Of course you do. I said so. But why do you think she didn't? I don't know. What does she say? I think she... Exactly. That's just it. They said so, and everyone feels so sorry for you. Sorry for me? My dear, you get all the sympathy. My dear, you get all the sympathy. What for? Is it possible that you've been so blind? Blind? I? You're with each other a great deal, aren't you? Yes. And your husband. <gasps> ah? That's what you mean? Oh, my poor dear, that's what they say. But what exactly do they say? You're with each other a great deal, aren't you? No. no that she sorry. and... That she and... Oh, no, my dear, of course I don't believe it, but... But just in exact words, what do they say? Hasn't he ever admired her in your presence? Yes. What does he say? That she's a peach and popular and all the men like her and many of them want to marry her? There you are, that's just it. They said so, Mrs. Morgan told me. And Diana refused me to leave because, well, she was with her cousin. Oh, Diana! You dear sweet thing, good evening. Hello, Mrs. Packard. Hello, in it, old top. I'm early because I came straight up from town after dressing at the club. Canteen work all day. How's everybody? I've been nursing at the hospital all afternoon. Isn't 
being in a trunk, doing the home nursing while releasing someone else to get the glory over there. I would have gone over myself. Well, why didn't you? Against the law. Um, I have I have relatives in the trenches. Oh, Enid. Uh, no, gotta get my. I phone. love the romance. But I love the romance of being there. Enid, get the letter from your brother, won't you, and read it to Mrs. Packard. He gives the most unusually interesting descriptions. Yes, it is. It's most interesting. Excuse me, it's in my desk upstairs. My dear Miss Chesbro, pardon me for seeming to presume, but I'm only trying to save you. Are you aware of what people are saying? People are saying things about me. Of course they wouldn't say it about you. What wouldn't they say? It's so much easier to flatter than to say disagreeable things. People are saying disagreeable things about me. You haven't heard. No, but I should like to. Of course you would. Any young woman like you, but my dear, do you really think you could come to this house? This house? Why? Enid and I uh, uh, went to school together. She's one of my oldest and best friends. Best, did you say? You doubt it? After what she said. Enid said something to make you doubt her friendship to me. Surely you must be mistaken. My dear woman, I have eyes and ears I can see and hear. What did Enid say? She said she wished you'd married one of the boys before they went off to war. Oh, that. You admit it, and still you come here. That is what people say. What do I admit? I don't follow your reasoning. I, I don't see. Well, of course you don't see. Love is always blind. Love? We haven't said a word about love. Of course not. It's a delicate word to use, and in this matter it is. Well, the world does not think it becoming. Mrs. Pack. I do not understand your innuendos. Tell me the plain facts. What are people saying? And what does love have to do with it? Mr. Halberman. Felix. And you. I. They couple your names together. They say that Felix and I? Why, it is a lie. It doesn't make any difference if it is a lie. The point is what people say. Oh, the people who say such things have rotten little minds and haven't have enough brains to entertain themselves. My dear Miss Chesbro. And you're just the same, repeating such slander. You insinuate that I am one I of these. I do. You have insulted me. Not more than you have insulted me. Miss Chesbro, you will suffer for this. I tell you something in all friendliness of spirit in order to protect you from the slanders of the world, and then you reward me by it. You repeat, you, you listen to idle tongues, and then you come here and rob me of my happiness by putting poison into my mind. I was telling you the truth. If people do not thank you for telling them the truth. I am the one who knows what the truth is, and I know that Enid and I are friends, and I know that Enid and Felix and I are friends, and that is all. Felix adores Enid. He would never care for any other woman. Oh, wouldn't he? Does the world know more than Mrs. Halberman herself? It does not. Why, just a few moments ago in this very room, she told me that she wished you had married because she knows that Felix is in love with you. She pretends to be your friend, but in her heart she hates you. It's not true. It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. 